guys, welcome back. Carter Bits be tripping. We're going to get right into this one today. Following up with yesterday's video, people, I think, really like that. I think all you viewers uh, like the analysis that's brought when it comes to what is the power coming from the riser, what is the power coming from the 12-volt ancillary across different algorithms. It does help when you're planning your build-out where you're going to get your power from, what are the different coins doing to the cards when it comes from a power standpoint on the riser and on that 12 volt ancillary. And if you have an older setup and you start mining newer stuff, does it pull more than what was originally set up for your build when it comes to using SATA connectors or even Molex? I had some people reach out and say, hey man, that video yesterday was really good because they're still on the four pin Molex connectors because they're using risers back from 2016 and they just switched out cards. So if you're moving to the latest generation RDNA two from AMD, or you're moving to like, let's say you found some deals on some RTX 3000 series cards, there is a distinct difference on the power draw. And what we're going to show you today is an RTX 3090. So we showed you AMD's 6700 yesterday. We're going to go to the top tier on the RTX 3090 today. And we're going to show you the power draw on this card just to give you some kind of idea of what you're going to need to do to adjust your riser setup to accommodate that. So let's jump over to our sponsor and then we're going to get right into this. Decentralization is one of the most important factors in a global cryptocurrency network. Bitcoin's proof of work functions due to the exceptional security provided by the miners of the network. Today's sponsor is Compass Mining, a company with a customer focused experience providing a tailored approach to purchasing, hosting, or even an at home option, allowing anyone the opportunity to participate. If this interests you, head over to compassmining.io. All right, my dudes. So, you know, this is an ASUS ROG 3090 GPU. This is an amazing GPU. It's great, real good, you know, heat transfer on it. We didn't have to actually change any pads or anything on this card. It actually stays and maintains around 60C, which is really good. Even full tilt under something like Ravencoin, which really puts a strain on the card when it comes to core and memory intensity. Now, you can always dial the cards back to not put such a heavy load on a card. And we'll have a future video of that, of what's best and optimized to your situation. Remember, it isn't about how fast the card can go. Yes, there's a lot of cards that can just be amazing when it comes to mega hash, but you're doing that at the expense of a lot more heat and a lot more power usage. And it's just an algebra problem to figure out if it's a better situation for you most of the time. But if you're producing more heat than your facility can withdraw, then sometimes backing that down. And even some of the planning that we've done with folks on some of their mining builds is taking their, their builds down and versus shutting everything down, actually down clocking everything to a point where you're not generating so much heat. You're still operational, even though you're not most efficient, but it makes you have an ability to still maintain some hash power while you're trying to figure out your heating and cooling situation. But let's jump into what this card is actually performing when it comes to a power usage on the riser and the 12 volt ancillaries. You can see this whole machine right now is using a little over 400 watts. This card's using about 305 to 308 mega or 305 watts right now of power, but we're going to show you guys kind of that breakdown. So right now we are set on the 12 volt power, which is these three eight pin connectors that are actually supplying power to the card from a, an auxiliary power standpoint. And you can see in the lower left hand corner of that meter that there, it's pulling 225 watts right now. Now this is on Ravencoin, so it's it's really using the full intensity. The settings on this are around 330 uh, wattage uh, on the actual setting on the card to not use any more than 330. And the core on that 1625 and the memory settings right now are 1300 on this card. So we can look, if we switch this to how much power the riser is actually pulling. So there we go. We're right at about 86 to 87 watts coming off that riser. If this riser was on a four pin Molex, or if it was on a um, like a SATA connector, it would eventually burn up that SATA line, usually at the power supply side. So if you're having some kind of instability with a machine and you switch to RTX 3000 series cards, 
and you're on SATA power, there's a high chance that you're going to have a failure. You're going to have a hard failure either on the power supply or on the actual SATA connector that's supplying the power where it eventually just fry out. Um, most of the time you don't have a, a crazy fire or anything, but I would highly recommend if you're on 3000 series cards to switch off of riser power from SATA to move it to a six pin connector. Now let's take a look. Actually, let's take a look at the screen. I know yesterday I wasn't showing you guys some of this. So this is the 39 running. It's running about 80% fans right now since it's out in the open here and you can see the out the output of this card right now is 57.6 mega hash on ravencoin right now so it's a a pretty decent um amount of performance it shows that the power is about 350 if we take the 225 plus the 84 that's where we're really getting the power output of it it's about 310 so this is actually overstating the amount of power that's being drawn from this card we could see from that meter that it was 84 plus the 84 to 85 plus the 225 is the real power output of this card. Now, if we go in and we reset this to a different screen here, let's go and set it to Ethereum and actually take the core down. And it, it, Ethereum doesn't use the core that much anyway, so we can actually downstep that core some. And we're going to drop the power also with this card uh, in relation to that. So I'm going to go in here in settings. And we're going to make some adjustments right here, right now. So we're going to drop this card down to 270. And then we're going to set it to Ethereum. Push that settings right now over. So, and we're going to let that spin up. Now, what you're going to see is the power drop on the machine itself here. And then you'll see the power kind of engage here. So right now we're still on the riser right now using about 65 watts at these current settings and we will switch over once it's fully spun up here so it, dropping it from 84 to 65 so right away we have a, a pretty decent uh, decrease on the riser power requirement but this still even a 3090 on an optimal configuration for ethereum is pulling over the rated amount that you would want to have on a sata or a molex four pin connector six pin only my dudes and the six pin is rated up to 150 watts if people are wondering what what's the max output of that and you know that that's i haven't seen anything up to 150 watts the most we've seen is actually a 3090 under full tilt having it have a full tdp of over 400 watts the actual power withdrawal on a riser i've seen break 100 so we're still well within that now let's give it enough juice to perform well because right now we're at about 91 mega hash i'm just making a reset here to see if we can get some more output of the card okay we've had this switched over to ethereum now still pulling around 80 watts so we only dropped about five watts Coming from that, now we're at a hundred, that's on the riser, so we're, we're pulling 81 watts out of the riser, and you can see here we're at 121 mega hash on this card. So it just started up. Um, this card, the 3090, for whatever reason, doesn't like to be monitored from this uh, HDMI. So when I have the HDMI plugged in, it kind of gives me a snapshot every... 30 seconds or so on the capture card. So I don't know if it's just something with the capture card or what, but this normally would be scrolling. I see it scrolling on the remote view uh, of its performance. So it's not froze up. It's actually using, and it's about 121.8 to 121.9 mega hash right now uh, on this card. And let's take a look at the performance from a power standpoint on the 12 volt rail here. So now we're down to about 212. So the, the, between Ravencoin and this card running, you know, at full tilt, if you're running 121 mega hash, it's not all that much different than what we had on the Ravencoin settings. So it's actually 210 watts right now being used plus the 80. So we're right at 300 watts on Ethereum. Now we can drop this more and be a little more optimal. It'll drop it to around 118 mega hash, but we can, we can shave quite a bit off of this by... Uh, dropping that core some we're going to drop that to 1400 and then we're going to take down the power to 305 
and let's go ahead and shut that down and then that's gonna that's gonna see you're gonna see an adjustment come in here and then we'll look at the settings here but again it, on 3090s uh, your power draw is going to be in that that realm of using 70 to 80 watts on the riser so now we're under 200 watts on the on the 12 volt ancillary and we are at about 118 mega hash right now if we come over to the screen it still hasn't updated the screen yet let's go back over to the riser and there's our riser performance. So now we're down to 75, 75 plus that. So we're around 275 um, total power draw here to 270 watts being uh, drawn from this, this 3090. And for that, we're at about 116 actually on this. I could actually bump the memory up just a bit to get a little more efficiency out of it. But once it updates this screen here, we can actually do a little capture card trickery here where we kind of disable and enable it. Let's see if we can get a updated um, thing here. Let's see if we can do this. Eventually it will give us an updated screen to show you guys the hash rate of this, this card. But we're at 116. That's the, that's the joys of doing this, even through an edited environment. You can see it in there scrolling right now and it's 116 is the mega hash on it right now all right my dudes hopefully that gave you kind of a perspective on a 3090 on the next video we'll do a 3060 ti and a 3070 we'll do two in the same video to kind of give you an understanding on the 3000 series it will go also to a 3080 ti in an upcoming video and we'll put that up against a non lhr 3080. So a 3080 Ti versus a non-LHR 3080, I think would give a very good understanding of that. Hopefully you guys are liking and subscribing this content. We're going to go through some more of this. And then a, a summation of these not last few videos will be put into a blog post. And then we'll put all that into a spreadsheet for you guys can have a one source thing. So if you're just catching the one video and you're like, hey, cool story. I don't want to see all the rest of them, but I do want to see the data. We'll have a follow up for you guys on that. So make sure you're liking and subscribe and share this content. We're trying to hit 100,000. Maybe we'll hit 100,000 this year. Subscribers on the channel. Got a lot of stuff coming up. Information density, my dudes. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.